military of the Republic of Stampy Mishosha is a headmaster or headquarters of British Council. Uh, thank you for accepting the invitation of La Republica, Tom. And please uh, let us know uh, about the 80 years in Colombia that British Council has been celebrating this year. Well, thanks for the opportunity. It's, it's great to be here. As, as you're saying, I'm, I'm Tom and I'm the director of the British Council. Um, uh, so yeah, this year we're celebrating a very special moment in our history in Colombia. Um, we are celebrating our 80th anniversary um, in, in Colombia. Um, we are one of the oldest British councils in the world, in Colombia. In fact, uh, we opened when we opened in the interwar period, um, there were only a handful of other operations that were open around the world. Um, and over the course of those 80 years, we have become the largest British council in the Americas. We are now in Colombia, bigger than the British Council in Mexico, for example. We're bigger than the British Council in Brazil. We're bigger than the British Council in the United States. Uh, and we believe that the reason for that is um, not just because Colombia is a fantastic place to work, but also because of the history of the connection that exists between the UK and Colombia and, and because of the history that we have as an organization here. Um, and in that time, we have worked to develop our teaching operations. So, Uh, when we first started in Colombia in uh, 1939, we only had around 400 students who were coming into our language center. Uh, we now have uh, approximately 15,000 students who actually take uh, language courses with us. Um, when we started, we only delivered around about 180 exams in our first year uh, in Bogota only. Uh, and now we deliver close to 60,000 exams across the whole of Colombia. Uh, and when we first started, we had a very small program in the arts, uh, mainly focused on Bogota, a very small program around education um, and a very small program, in fact, non-existent program working outside of education, what we call society. And now we have a program which is worth around about uh, five million pounds annually and reaches all corners of Colombia It's in all the main cities, um, but also in the last two years, we are proud to have reached places like Guainia, Vichada, Cordoba, Putumayo, um, uh, along the Pacific coast, along all of the Caribbean coast. Um, so, yeah, it's an incredible. I have an incredible job. It may, my life is made easy because every day is different and, and I've got to see all parts of Colombia as a result. Tom, let's uh, begin now uh, with the basics. Uh, people in Colombia want to learn English. They want to have an exact pronunciation, vocabulary, they want to travel, make, a, for example, a master's degree overseas. So people need the language. And in Colombian schools, there's a lack of, of English uh, being taught uh, because there's no natives from other countries uh, living here. Although here, uh, right now, there's a lot of foreigners. Many of them are working on other things. But I think that Colombians need to speak more English and you're part of that story. How do you see that, uh, the, the basic, the, the first part of the service is to teach Colombians to learn a uh, very good English? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a very good point. I, I think, you know, English uh, as a language um, has, of course, has a natural connection to the United Kingdom, uh, but it, it has almost, is now owned globally. I mean, English is the lingua franca, Uh, across the world. Um, that's it's the language of business, it's the language of technology, um, it's the language of travel. Um, so you're absolutely right when you say that if you want to work and study abroad internationally, then you need to have a decent level of English. Um, of course, Colombia has been at a government level, has been pushing uh, uh, funds into trying to improve bilingualism uh, in the public sector, in the in In the, across schools and universities and as the British Council we're very happy to be able to support at that level as well but we recognize that for many individual citizens there is they also want to enhance what they might get or their children might get um, through education through standard education whether private or public and that's why we run a, a teaching center as well so we offer private language courses to as I was saying up to 15,000 students Uh, in Bogota, uh, but also we work with the Ministry of Education, we work with the Secretaries of Education, we work with universities, we work with schools to help them improve their level of English language teaching and ultimately, of course, hopefully improve the level of bilingualism 
uh, and of English language learning across the whole of Colombia so that Colombia as a nation is better equipped to engage in uh, international business, in, uh, in international study, and of course for Colombians to travel abroad as well and speak English fluently. One of the difficulties, uh, not only Colombia, whole Latin America has this problem, maybe except Brazil, is that the kids are being also a very you know, small age into television, cable television. They consume a lot of uh, North American English in the movies, in the theaters, and now in the social networks. But when you start uh, listening to British, it's another kind of English, no? It's another kind of pronunciation. Even other uh, uh, words in some parts uh, of the language Uh, and people that start to study at the British Council and maybe have been listening to the English from North America and the movies feel the difference, no? That's like a first initial difficulty that you have to surpass. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, every, I mean, I, I, as a bit like with Spanish, uh, when you travel from Colombia to Chile, uh, I can't, to be honest, I can't understand the uh, Chileno, Chilenos when they're speaking Spanish. Uh, and sometimes the Argentinos as well, when, because of their, their accents. And it's the same in, with English as well. Of course, when you travel to different parts of the world, there are different accents. There are different words that are used. There's different slang. Um, and, and, you know, and that's part of the learning pro process for someone who's starting to learn English from scratch. Uh, what I would say about our teaching center here in Bogota is we have a real mix of native speakers from uh, a whole range of countries. So we have... Uh, we have, of course, British native speakers. We have Colombian teachers who have, uh, a bit like yourself, have learned English to a very high standard and actually have uh, high, you know, high standards of teaching qualifications as well. Otherwise, we wouldn't employ them. Uh, we have uh, American teachers. We have Canadian teachers. We have uh, teachers from the Caribbean, from Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, and what we believe is that that really gives a, a total mix of uh, different sounds and ways in which you use the English language which ultimately help students in their journey. People that maybe are, are reading the, the paper or, or viewing the video uh, understand and maybe that British Council is only about teaching English but I understand you have another portfolio of services and new programs and projects as you say in different parts of Colombia. Now let's go into that part. What other things that uh, you can find in British Council apart from learning English? Well, I think, I mean, basically what makes the British Council different is that we're not just a language center. So um, we're a not-for-profit, and I think that's very important for uh, our students uh, to know. Uh, essentially, every single pound or pistol that we generate gets reinvested into um, our wider mandate, which is about building trust and friendly knowledge and understanding between the UK and, in this case, Colombia. Uh, we operate and we do that in over 100 countries across the world. Um, essentially, we, what we do, uh, we describe as cultural relations. So, um, and, and that means that through uh, the, the best of the UK in the arts, education, in English, of course, uh, exams, and in what we call society, which is basically working outside of formal education, um, we connect, help to connect the UK with other countries around the world and, and build those people-to-people -people relationships, um, in this case between Colombians and, uh, and, and their UK counterparts. Um, in Colombia specifically, what that has meant is that we, as I mentioned beforehand, we've developed our program um, and our program works across the arts. We uh, work in literature, we work in film, we work in music, uh, uh, we work in architecture, design, fashion. Uh, essentially, over the last 20 years in Colombia, we've been at the heart of the, uh, at the debate around uh, the orange economy and the creative industries, supporting Colombia at government level, but also at institutional individual level to really build up the skills of creative uh, entrepreneurs um, and connect them to the UK and the rest of the world. Uh, on the other hand, as I was saying beforehand, we work in, the, uh, in education. Uh, we support the public sector and private sector in education to improve the quality of the education they're providing. That could be through teacher training. It could be by helping head teachers, headmasters to improve their leadership. Um, it could be through, more recently, we've started a project around computing education. So actually helping uh, young people and teachers across Colombia to learn how to 
uh, code, uh, better code. So, you know, obviously the next generations, this will be a, a significant challenge in terms of employment. And the UK has a lot of lessons learned around computing education, which we're bringing to Colombia. Um, we uh, also deliver exams uh, for schools. So the UK have a high standard of, of exams, which we're uh, supporting Colombian bi bilingual schools to deliver um, in, in, as part of their curriculum. Um, and as I mentioned, we work in society. We, that for us means that we're working essentially outside of formal education. So we've trained women in Putumayo on uh, ecotourism, developed a diploma in collaboration with the Ministry of Education to, uh, to give those women so that they're prepared for more tourists when they arrive, help them to learn English. We're working with um, six indigenous groups across Colombia to help them uh, better uh, take advantage of their intangible heritage, help them uh, develop arts and crafts that can be marketed internationally, um, help them uh, celebrate their traditions and connect them internationally through those as well. Uh, we're working with young people across the board to help them build their active citizenship. So uh, help them become global citizens, help them support Colombia's peace uh, agreement or the implementation of Colombia's peace agreement um, through, for example, programs like Manos a la Paz, which uh, the previous government rolled out and which now there, there's, a, there's a conversation about whether that should be extended and continued. Um, similarly, we're working with uh, community leaders, over almost uh, 1,100 community leaders across uh, priority communities for the, the implementation of the peace agreement to help them build their negotiation skills, to help them build their, uh, their leadership skills in the process of agreeing rural development plans with the government uh, as the uh, peace agreement is implemented over the last few years and in the coming years as well. So that's just a flavor of some of the, the work that we're, we're doing and essentially that's what makes us different is that any, uh, anybody who comes to study at the British Council or take an exam at the British Council is also essentially supporting some of that wider work that we do, not just in Colombia, in over 110 countries, um, supporting the, the development and the peace of peace, prosperity, uh, and, and transforming the lives of the next generations of Colombia. Tom, let's talk about the new uh, technology standards for education, especially uh, learning a language. I understand that in the last five to ten years in many parts of the world, teachers now use uh, different tools, uh, social networks, uh, connectivity, internet, big data, so that people can learn faster, not only in the, the place where they go to study in a classroom or in a school, but also from their house, inside a car, with their mobile phones. Uh, what do you uh, see, like in the future, in the near future of technology learning and technology teaching the people how to speak another language? Um, that's a great question. I think, you know, obviously the world is moving very fast. Um, actually, within the British Council, we have, uh, in this region, we have developed the first remote English language teaching center. Um, so from Buenos Aires, uh, we have a remote teaching center, which is teaching uh, every single primary school in Uruguay linked to Euro the Uruguayan government's Plan Ceibal, which is around uh, obviously uh, quality education, providing quality education. So we will beam in teachers um, into the classroom into, uh, to engage with uh, primary school children and help them learn English in that way. And that's something that we're seeing uh, is developing as an interest across the globe. Um, recently, actually, that same remote teaching center was asked by the Argentinian government to train uh, refugees who are going to Argentina from the Middle East in Spanish. So the technology that we're using is becoming of interest for a whole range of purposes. In terms of education as a whole, you know, that's something that we are, the UK has a, um, a long history in distance learning and, and remote uh, education, remote courses, distance, distance learning courses that are done at university level, for example. And we're seeing that there is an increasing interest from universities in Colombia and how can they learn more uh, about providing distance learning, uh, remote teaching here as well. Of course, technology, access to technology is absolutely at the heart of that. So when you're talking about remote communities in Colombia, one of the challenges we have is actually internet connection for example, or the, the availability of plasma screens and those kinds of things. But even that is changing at such a rapid pace that I can see that in five, ten years' time it will be possible for our teaching centre here in Bogotá to be teaching English 
um, in much more remote areas of the country. So, um, and we very much look forward to, to, to that moment. Tom, uh, let's talk only a small percentage of a big thing that's called Brexit, but I, I think it's important because you say you have operations in more than 100 countries. What will happen to those uh, teachers and people that work in the British councils of countries that are inside Europe today? Are they asking to maybe move to another country? Do the people talk about that? Because uh, Brexit is a very, very big thing that's being negotiated between British and European, and it's not going to be a, an easy solution soon. Mm -hmm. So I think that maybe everybody, everybody in his in own industry is going to be rethinking of the way that he's working. What about those guys that are overseas uh, teaching, for example, in Spain, in Germany? Uh, people are thinking that uh, their contracts are going to change, the taxes are going to be different? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to get involved in, in the sort of more political side of, of, the, uh, of the, the Brexit debate. As you know, there are still many uncertainties, including in the next few weeks, there will be many develops, developments at a political level, which hopefully will bring a degree of clarity to the whole Brexit issue. I mean, of course, we have a globally mobile workforce and there will be some challenges and no doubt around um, uh, around that globally mobile workforce and, and uh, making sure that we're uh, in line with whatever the Brexit the negotiations spit out at the end of the process. Um, I think perhaps more, most importantly, it's about saying that despite from the British Council point of view, despite the fact that, of course, as part of uh, the, the long uh, negotiations that have happened around Brexit, to say that the UK is, is really open to, open to business, open to study, open to travel. Um, and I would say that our role in that is really bringing the best of the UK to all the places where we work to really showcase what the UK has to offer and you know the UK has a top quality educational system um, of course it has plenty of reasons to, to uh, plenty of uh, you know top notch tourist sites plenty of great museums and, and you know working with those partners with universities with cultural institutes to really bring the best of the UK to Colombia of course whilst promoting the, the you know the possibilities for Colombians to also go and travel to the UK Um, I think institutionally, uh, one of the big concerns for UK uh, organizations is, for example, around universities and how, uh, you know, what will happen in terms of university funding post-Brexit. These are very real debates that are happening at the moment. Uh, how easy it will be for students. We currently are the national agency for Erasmus Plus in the UK. So we actually manage a program which sends young people, students, uh, connects university, connects colleges from the UK to other European countries. And there's a question about whether or not that program will continue. Uh, it's a European Union funded program, whether that program will continue for the UK after Brexit. That's a live debate. And, you know, we are, of course, keeping our very much our ear to the ground around uh, what will come of, uh, of those discussions. Tom, uh, finally, uh, I think it's important to talk about uh, artificial intelligence. Do you see artificial intelligence soon in the process of learning English uh, or any language? Do you see people with their mobile phones or tablets uh, interacting with a robot and pronouncing, reading? Is that really soon uh, going to happen? It's a good, a good question. I mean, I think... Uh, I think it will happen. I think it's. I don't think it's going to happen in the next couple of years. I think you already. Ha I mean, I've noticed the difference in the last. Obviously, as uh, a European living in Colombia, um, seeing how many tourists are coming here, the number of tourists is increasing. Not everyone has Spanish, and it's incredible to see how many people are actually using their mobile phones to make themselves understood in taxis uh, or while they're 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 getting around, and uh, you know while they're. They're traveling around Colombia, enjoying all the all the sites of that this beautiful country has to offer. Um, I think that's the beginning of it. I think that can only improve. Of course, there's a conversation now about automatic translators. Uh, you know, where basically, uh, you know, as people travel the world, they'll be able to just speak into a microphone, and it will automatically translate into a different language uh, what you're saying. So it basically, it will eliminate the need to even type into Google what you're trying to say. Um, That will, of course, revolutionize the way that we can communicate across the world. And I think, um, you know, that will, of course, change the nature of uh, the requirement of English language or other languages as we travel and work and study internationally. 
Having said that, I still feel that there is... I was actually at a, um, uh, an event the other night at Cancilleria, and we were having an interesting debate about the value of learning languages. It was to launch the Red de Centro Binacionales uh, in Bogota, which we, we are part of, and it's with uh, obviously another six binational cultural centers. Um, and it was a, a very interesting debate around the value of learning a language. So regardless of whether your phone or an automatic translator can, um, can do the job for you, l the process of actually learning a language changes your mentality. There are many studies that uh, have been um, published on the value of being bilingual, for example, and how it re rewires your brain. Um, and whether you're bilingual or not, even just being an intermediate language speaker in another language helps you actually understand the culture better. So my personal view is that um, those technology will never replace uh, an element of language learning, um, which is interconnected with learning about a new culture, learning about a different culture, and also in a way, helping to re rewire your brain and open your brain to the world. Don't thank you for being with La Republic. Thank you very much.